So it appears Seagate has forgotten what on earth a fire cooter actually is. And it turns out they popped out this guy, the Seagate Fire Cooter SSD, and um, actually looks interesting. There goes that SSD. Now for the new players in town who haven't really followed Seagate sort of for quite some time, the Firecuda line is actually part of their SSHD series, which for some people have picked up a bit of a name for not being the most reliable drives. I mean, SSHDs for some are great, and for a lot of other people aren't exactly the world's greatest option. Now, these particular drives offer your standard kind of hard drive with a bit of SSD goodness thrown in there for some faster speeds, hence the name, where it used to be the Barracuda uh, hard drive and Firecuda SSD adding a little bit of, well, fire to the speed and performance. Then back in 2016, they kind of re-kicked things off with the Guardian series of hard drives, featuring their new 10 terabyte capacities in their different lineup here, with the Skyhawk, they've got the Fish, which is their Barracuda, and also to the Iron Wolf. It kind of was a nice rebranding structure, and they actually hired the guy that made the WD branding, so your WD Red, WD Blue, WD Purple, all those kind of things. They hired that guy to come and make exactly the same structure over at Seagate, which was kind of a weird thing when that went down. But either way, they went ahead and rebranded with a bit of focus on quality and also to bringing those high capacities to market. And the Firecuda also too was updated to the new Guardian series and got, well, the weird, disgusting fish from Barracuda, except red. And um, yeah, whoever designed that Firecuda and Barracuda fish just yeah, not great. But 2020 has rolled around and we've got this. It's no longer a fish, it is a dragon, which is the new Firecuda SSD. It's super fast and you guess you can kind of take a guess at that they were going for a new branding, new fast speeds. Although why they used a dragon and not the original Firecuda is a little bit weird and why they just didn't call it the Dragon series. It's a little bit beyond me. I mean, when we watched the original launch video for this particular product, we spent like 95% of the one minute video that they showed us looking at a dragon flying around. And then they came up and was like, ha, no, it's the Firecuda branding. So a little bit of an odd one there. Now this all comes down to the fact of the naming scheme it's just kind of a weird one, and um, maybe they should have called it Dragon, or if they wanted to stick with the uh, kind of longer names, maybe they should have just called it like Fire Dragon or Speed Dragon if they wanted to get all their syllables in a row. Either way, let's take a look at the drive. So this particular guy comes in two different options known as the Pleb Spec 510 series and the Legit 520 series. Okay, okay, so yeah, in all seriousness, the 510 series is still definitely a solid offering, and let's face it, not everyone is really gonna go out and run and buy new motherboards, CPUs, and basically rebuild their computer just for slightly better performance. Sure, it's definitely good performance, but it is PCI Gen 4, and it would be nice to just drop in an adapter, but unfortunately, that's not really how this whole thing works. So, Gen 3 is still a good offering, but today we're gonna to be looking at the Gen 4 version and if you are thinking about building a new computer and you do have Gen 4 PCI Express support it's really a no-brainer right here. Now in terms of paper the 520 that we have here today is looking at 5 gigabytes per second on the reads and 4.4 gigabytes per second on the writes with sizes from 500 gigabytes, 1 terabyte and 2 terabyte options. Now this particular 520 series does use PCI Express Gen 4 whereas the 510 uses PCI Express Gen 3 hence the lower speeds. So do make sure that again the adapter you have or the motherboard you have does support 4th gen PCI Express SSDs because You'll be in a bit of trouble if you don't, because it isn't that great. Under the hood, this guy is also too featuring a five-year warranty, and hardware-wise, we're looking at Toshiba BICS4 3D TLC NAND flash, and of course, a custom E16 controller from Seagate, not to mention two RAM chips on this guy for instruction sets and other SSD functionality. So all in all, in terms of the hardware, it's great, it's pretty much on point. It's made by Seagate, definitely a reputable manufacturer, so Let's jump into the performance numbers. So throwing this in my test bench, which was a Ryzen 7 3700X, fortunately at stock speeds, an ASRock X570 with PCI Express 4.0 support on that M.2 drive, 1080 Ti Corsair H150i Vengeance LPX DDR4 at 3600 megahertz. All in all, a pretty decent system. Loading up our games, load times were definitely on point, although not exactly as good as I had of hope. So when I actually got this guy and looked at the specs on paper, I was expecting at least half, maybe even less uh, in terms of load times compared to the other drives that we've gone ahead and benchmarks, especially those uh, on the SATA side. 
However, that really exactly wasn't necessarily the case. Sure, it did definitely get better performance. However, when it comes to loading games, there's kind of a limit to how fast you can load because there's gonna be other factors and other processes in place that aren't exactly sort of like a bottleneck, rather it's just things need to happen and there's only so fast you need to go ahead and happen. Although I guess that is technically a bottleneck. Either way, point being, to fully take advantage of these SSDs, we're gonna be waiting quite a few generations of this type of hardware being out in PCs and also to in consoles before we start seeing games really take advantage of these super fast SSDs. Yes, we're getting some demos like the Unreal Engine coming out with Unreal levels of graphics, but in terms of actual games that you're gonna be playing on your system here today, they'll take advantage slightly of faster speeds, but it's not gonna be like going from a hard drive to SSD type performance increase. Uh, taking a look at our synthetics though, we are also to seeing some pretty sick numbers. Obviously being PCI Express 4th Gen, we do take advantage of all that bandwidth and we are bang straight on five gigabytes per second by 4.2 gigabytes on our sequential Q-Depth 8T1 test. Random, also too, not too bad at all. All in all though, these are the best numbers that I've been able to test here. Thanks to the fact that this is also to the first PCI Express Gen 4 NVMe SSD that I've checked out. So yeah, it's a really cool piece of kit here. All the synthetics were blown away and even just doing things like file transfers were absolutely on point. In fact, to record this video, we've got the fastest SD card in the camera that I'm gonna be copying to the fastest SSD that you can, or one of the fastest SSDs you can buy here in 2020. Now, durability wise, we are also to running the Anvil test. So I threw Anvil on this guy. We wrote 10 terabytes to it, absolutely no problems, no speed slowdowns. Um, unless I'm blind, I didn't actually see See a rated number of how many writes we can actually do to this drive so maybe that's a number that hasn't come out yet or maybe it has if it has let me know down in that comment section uh, but all in all durability was just fine and we had no problems and uh, compared to some of our more recent videos which you can check out right there where I actually went ahead and wrote a lot of data it was very fast to go ahead and write 10 terabytes to this drive I mean 4.2 gigs a second yeah, that test was very easy to do. So then that brings us to the conclusion of this video. In terms of load times, obviously in games, this thing was fast, but not as fast as you might expect, as it's probably gonna take us a few generations of this level of hardware to be in our computers, and also to things like game consoles to really take advantage of this level of speed. Whereas the real winner here in real world applications is definitely file transfer and professional applications. Taking full advantage of that Gen 4 PCI Express link, we were able to to stomp all of our synthetics and also to file transfers, which was absolutely on point. For real world applications, right this very second, I have the fastest SD card you can put inside of a camera recording this video, and we're gonna yank it off onto one of the fastest SSDs that you can read with the only bottleneck being the USB 3.0 interface, which is a pretty hilarious thing. Both our media types are very, very fast. So it's gonna be an awesome little test right here. Speaking of tests, the rest of those tests were absolutely fine, whether it was synthetics like Crystalismark punching out five gigabytes per second on the reads and awesome numbers throughout the rest of the test. Either way, this is the fastest SSD that I've had my hands on. And if you do have a computer that can take advantage of this, if you have a budget that can take advantage of this and you have a use case that can take advantage of this, I have to say it's one of the few Seagate products I actually give a pretty decent thumbs up to, provided that their drives don't die in a year like some of their other products. Anyway, guys, that's about it for this video. If you wanna pick up one of these, I'll leave them linked down in that description box, both the uh, Pleb Spec 510 and also to the Pro Spec 520 versions, all linked down there. And uh, do stay tuned because as soon as that 980 from Samsung comes out, you can bet your bottom dollar we'll be checking that one out and throwing it head to head with this particular guy with the uh, specs supposedly coming out from that 980 being absolutely on point. Guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.